Ready to watch Channing Tatum's audition tape for Gambit? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Jupiter Ascending. Your Majesty's life is going to change. Why? Help me. Your Earth is a very small part of a very large industry. Right now, Barlem owns the title to Earth. Once you claim it, the Earth will belong to you. I will harvest that planet tomorrow before I let her take it from me. We need a plan. We need firepower. Yes, some of us X-Men fans are nervous. Channing Tatum is about to become a big part of Fox's X-Men Cinematic Universe, debuting his version of the Rage and Cajun in X-Men Apocalypse in May 2016, and then getting a solo Gambit movie later the very same year. What's Jupiter Ascending got to do with that? Well, it's Tatum's first sci-fi action film, complete with a crazy getup and copious special effects. How far a leap is it from dancing to fighting? Tatum, who got his start and step up, can leap pretty far, and he's certainly proven his versatility with the Jump Street films in Foxcatcher, or at the very least, his willingness to take a risk. And working with the Wachowskis is definitely a big risk. The creative duo is certainly as highly regarded as some of the other directors Tatum will soon be working with, Quentin Tarantino, the Coen brothers, yet they're still riding their Matrix high, having yet to direct any film subsequently to replenish the well of their reputation. Speed Racer only has its cult fans, including me, while Cloud Atlas has an even smaller group of cult fans. In fact, it would seem the Wachowskis fan base grows smaller with each film. They've had a little more success as producers, though, at least rep-wise, with V for Vendetta and Ninja Assassin. And to be honest, the Wachowskis have earned a tremendous amount of goodwill from fans for how wonderfully and respectfully they handled Lana's gender transition, both personally and professionally. With Lana giving an incredibly compelling and entertaining speech in 2012 when she received the Human Rights Campaign's Visibility Award. Lana Wachowski is probably the most high-profile transgender, although times are certainly changing, with Orange's The New Black's Laverne Cox and WikiLeaks provider Chelsea Manning recently making headlines. But surely the Wachowskis would prefer to make headlines for their work, positive ones. And distributor Warner Brothers is trying to give them the best launch possible, delaying the release of the film from summer 2014 to the less competitive February 2015. Officially, though, the delay was to allow for more time to complete the film's special effects and prepare a top-notch marketing campaign. IMAX 3D will also certainly help Jupiter Ascending's box office numbers, plus there is a rumor that a Batman v Superman trailer will drop with the film, also from Warner Brothers. Plus, hey, Jupiter Ascending also features Game of Thrones' Sean Bean, Oscar nominee Eddie Redmayne, and Meg. Yet Cloud Atlas was also star-studded, a star-studded flop. So will Jupiter Ascending replenish the Wachowski fandom, or will they have to rely on their upcoming Netflix series? So I've got good news and bad news. The good news is, is that Channing Tatum is pretty darn good here, to the point that if I were Fox, I would have no regrets about casting him as Gambit after seeing Jupiter Ascending. The bad news? I think I might have lost all faith in the Wachowskis, and if I were Netflix, I'd be super nervous about their show, which I had just greenlit. Uh, now, I understand what the Wachowskis are trying to do here. They're trying to do a space fairy tale. And having seen the results, it gives you a greater appreciation for George Lucas and Star Wars, because apparently space fairy tales are hard. And bottom line, this one suffers from a massive case of overkill. Let's take Channing Tatum's character. Now, he is a former gifted soldier drummed out of the military who's been turned into a mercenary. But on top of that, it was also because of, mis of a mysterious incident, which, by the way, after it's introduced, is never further explored or the mystery solved. Then on top of that, he's spliced with a wolf. So he not only has pointy ears, but wolf tendencies, like a great sense of smell to track people uh, and wanting to be part of a pack. And then on top of that, he was the albino of his litter, I guess to give him even more outsider qualities. And you're like, why do you need all that? You only need like half of that to make him a compelling character in this movie. And truth be told, what makes the character that Channing Tatum plays so compelling is one, that he's played by Channing Tatum, and two, he's so competent as a soldier and a hero. To the point where it becomes almost laughable how many times he has to save Mila Kunis. Now, on that note, 
I did appreciate exploring the lives of modern-day Russian immigrants with Kunis' character. However, she was such a damsel in distress, it just was incredibly antiquated. I mean, we left that all behind with Princess Leia, but it seems even more ridiculous today with movies like Frozen, Maleficent, and of course, The Hunger Games. Then finally, they're really attacking this story from two sides. They have the Channing Tatum Mila Kunis storyline, uh, but then also they have one with Eddie Redmayne and you know his group of characters. And as a result, they don't have enough time for either storyline and none is developed enough. Now, of course, the production design is spectacular. It's breathtaking. But I think at this point, at least with the Wachowskis, it's just not enough anymore. And there were some really intense chase sequences, which I didn't care about because I didn't care about any of the characters. I had a hard time understanding what was going on. And a lot of times the technology, you know, really well designed, you know, technology for like, let's say a spacecraft in a movie, you look at it and you're like, oh, I can kind of understand why you have all these bells and whistles on it. You know, you get it. But here it was looked like someone just barfed up, you know, a technological design. And they were like, it has little floaty things around it because it's cool. And you're like, you know what? This story is so bad. I can't marvel at the coolness of your spaceship. It's just, it's ridiculous. And then also, I'm sure some of you are wondering about Eddie Redmayne. He has some really good moments, but overall, yes, it's an embarrassing performance. And let's just chalk this up to him paying his dues, and let's hope with his Oscar nomination and some really great roles on the horizon, he's done with this kind of stuff, and he never has to stoop to this level again. So, at the end of the day, the Wachowskis tried to make a classic Star Wars movie, but ended up with something on the level of the prequels. So that's my review of Jupiter Ascending. Uh, if you've seen it, I feel sorry for you, but leave your thoughts down below. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, and you can uh, watch some more episodes right now.